What's going on engineers? In this video we're going to look at Linux command line pipes and redirection. This is one of those pieces of functionality that's very common and very essential for you to understand if you're going to work on the command line in Linux. Fortunately, it's not too difficult to understand. And not only are we going to look at how to use pipes and redirection, we're going to look at some of the internals on exactly how those two things work. So let's get into it. Before we get right into pipes and redirection, we got to first talk a little bit about these things called file descriptors. Essentially what a file descriptor is, is it's a handle to a resource that's open when a program requests it. When a program wants to open a file, whether it's for reading, writing, or otherwise, it has to request that from the kernel. It has to say, hey, I want to get access to this file. When the kernel opens this file for reading, writing, or otherwise, it assigns it the next available file descriptor number, which is typically three, because the first three are going to be reserved, and we're going to talk about those in a second, and then the program can do whatever it wants with that. So, how do file descriptors apply to what we're talking about? Well, every time a program is ran, the Linux kernel will assign three file descriptors by default to that program. And that's going to be file descriptor 0, which is standard in, file descriptor 1, which is standard out, and file descriptor 2, which is standard error. Showing this can be demonstrated fairly easy. What we can do is we can run a command like sleep60, run that in the background, and then we can use what's called lsof, which is a list of open files, and then supply the PID of just the previous command. And then what we'll see here is these three lines that are of interest. You can see in the FT column it says 0, 1, and 2, and then the name it's attached to dev PTS 12. That's basically this terminal, with PTS is pseudo terminal, and then it's going to be number 12. And we can see it's number 12 by doing TTY and clicking enter. You can see here this matches this. So now that we've seen that each of these are attached to the terminal, what exactly are each of these? Standard in is going to be the file descriptor which takes in data and supplies it to a program as input. The three most common things that can write to standard in is going to be data from your keyboard that you type, data from a program that is piped into another program, and then data from a file that is redirected into standard in. And the reason standard in is an umbrella for those three things is because programs need not be concerned necessarily where the data comes from. Like when you write a program, you don't have to say if keyboard, then this, if file, then this, if pipe redirection, then this. All the program has to be concerned about is what am I reading in from standard in? And the program won't know and won't care exactly where it came from. They just know that it's there now. This is done to make interfacing with programs a lot easier and adds a lot more flexibility. As for FT1 standard out and FT2 standard error, they are very similar in that they are both types of output and that they go to the terminal by default, but they are different in the type of output it is. If you've ever written a hello world program in any language, whether it's C or Python or whatever, that hello world that's written out to the terminal is actually written out to standard out. So you might be asking yourself at this point, well, if they're both exactly the same and they both go to the terminal by default, then why is there a standard out and a standard error? Why isn't there just a standard out which contains both? And the reason it's like this is because not all programs that are ran from the command line are intended to be read by humans. Take, for example, a compression program like tar or gzip. Under ordinary operation, what you would do is you would supply plain text to those programs, and those programs would output to standard out the compressed text. But what if those programs wanted to write a warning to the terminal to let you know something went wrong? If there was only one standard out, it would write that warning to standard out, which would actually be written as part of that compressed text. If it wrote a plain text warning to a compressed text stream, it would most assuredly break the compressed format and then basically render that file useless. But with standard out and standard errors separate, it can write the compressed text to standard out, and it can write the warnings or errors to standard error, which will just show up in the terminal as normal text. So now that we know about standard in, standard out, and standard error, redirection, and pipes, it's all very easy. So let's look at some examples. The first is just default. When you run a program on the Linux, the keyboard is connected to standard in, and then anything written to standard out or standard error is written to the terminal. This is the default. You'll notice there's nothing else in here other than you just call the program. So now we introduce pipes, specifically the anonymous pipe. And the whole purpose of the anonymous pipe is to easily connect one program's standard out to another program's standard in. That's it. So when you run program one, pipe program two, what you're saying is run program one, connect the keyboard to standard in, and then connect standard out to program two standard in, and then connect program two standard out and standard error to the terminal. This effectively runs program two with program one's output as its input. A common use for anonymous pipe would be something like piping to grep, which will filter out lines that match a given pattern. So we could do ls-l, for instance, which gives us a list of files. But if we wanted to filter this down just by lines that contain the word write, we could do ls-l. 
we could pipe that output into the program called grep, and then we could type write to filter out just those lines. And you can see now that it only gives us the lines that have the word write in it. The cool thing about pipes though is that you can do it more than once. So if you wanted to take the output of grep write and pipe it into yet another command, like say wc-l, which will count the number of lines in the output, now we just get the number two. So just to recap what's happening here, standard out from ls is attached to standard in on grep, and then standard out on grep is attached to standard in on wc. Standard out for wc is of course the terminal, so it just outputs the number two. Now note that I said that this is an anonymous pipe, there's also something called a named pipe, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So next we're going to look at redirection. Redirection and pipes are very similar, except pipes deal primarily with the output of a program, whereas redirection deals with the input of files and then the output to files. So consider the following two lines, which are identical but written in different ways. What this says is take the standard out from program one and write it to out.log. The syntax for this is going to be the file descriptor number and then write caret space and then the place you want to write that output to. Now, there cannot be a space here. If you were to add a space here, you actually change the meaning of this. Now it's program one is being ran with a single argument called one and then it redirects standard out to out.log. Now, just by pure coincidence, it would actually work exactly the same, but it's not always going to be like that. Now, because output redirection is by default standard out, you don't actually have to supply the one. Now, in the previous example, we just dealt with standard out. We didn't touch standard error. Standard error would still go to the terminal. But what if you wanted to redirect both? So what this is saying is run program one, write standard out to out.log, and also write standard error to out.log. Now, in effect, what this will do is this will make this program produce no output to the terminal. In the second line, this can be simplified a little bit because remember standard out is implied, so you can leave that out here, and then you have to supply standard error separately. So if you wanted to write all of the output to one spot, both standard out and standard error, you can use this variant instead. This says take the standard out from program one and write it to out.log, and then also take standard error and write it to standard out. Now note I used the ampersand here. This is very important. If I didn't have this ampersand, what this actually says, instead of saying write standard error to standard out, what this actually says is write standard error to a file called one. So make sure you use the ampersand, it's essential. This next example is using a file's content as input for standard in. Now I wrote this in two ways. I wrote it using redirection. I also wrote it using pipes. These are both functionally identical. The only difference is the one that uses pipes has a additional and also unnecessary call to cat. In the first example, program one takes input.txt as standard in. In the second example, program one takes the output of cat input.txt as standard in. In both cases, they're exactly the same. This next example shows just that you can combine both input redirection and output redirection. In this first example, program one is being supplied input.txt as standard in, and then it's writing its standard out to output.txt. So earlier we were working with anonymous pipes. There's another type called a named pipe. Named pipes are made with the make fifo command. So if we do make fifo my pipe, we get a new file called my pipe. And you can see it's a different color and it has this little p here, which is the character for pipe. Now for pipes to work, you have to put something on both ends at the same time. So if one program writes to the pipe, it will block until a second program reads from the pipe. If the second program reads to the pipe, it will block until the first program writes to the pipe. When program one writes to it and program two reads to it, essentially what's happening is the output from program one is being sent to standard in on program two. And then finally, there's a couple file descriptor special cases that we're gonna look at. When you're writing a program in the terminal, standard out has to go somewhere. But what if you want standard out and standard error to just simply be discarded? Well, the way you do that is you would redirect it to this special device called devnull. Devnull is a kernel pseudo device where you can just write to it and the data just disappears and that's it. Because it goes nowhere, it's very fast and it takes up no hard drive space, no memory, no nothing. And then finally is custom file descriptors. You're not limited to just zero, one, and two. You can just invent new file descriptors on the fly. So essentially what this says is take the data that's written to file descriptor four and redirect it to out.log. But file descriptor four, what, what is that? Well, let's look at our write.c file. So in our file here, we can see we're using the write command to write to file descriptor four and we're writing the content hello with a new line. This is a special way of writing to a file without actually supplying the file. All you're writing to is a file descriptor and you're letting the call to this program determine exactly where it's written to. 
And the last note I want to make before we finish up is up until now, we've been using a single write caret, and this means to truncate this file and then write the output to the file. If you want to just append the data to the file, all you got to do is just replace all these write carrots with double write caret. So single write caret is truncate and write, double write caret is just append. And we're done. That's all there is to pipes and redirection. I urge everybody to give some of this a try. There's lots of commands to run, and there's lots of commands that can be piped into other commands to experiment with this new functionality you've learned. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, be sure to leave them below in the comments. Other than that, hope to see everybody in the next video. Take care.